Hello. Welcome to the Wild Oak Spring Sunday School online lesson this morning. Glad to see everybody. Hope you all are doing well. Hope you're having a happy and safe 4th of July. Um, we're here ready to discuss for uh, God's Word. And I have with me our pastor, Reverend Casey. Good morning, Reverend Casey. Good morning. How are you? All right, all right. Um, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Always good to have some good backup. Amen. Just backup. All right. Our scripture this morning, being the first Sunday of July, we still discussing wisdom, Reverend. And we need that wisdom. We need it every Sunday, every day. That's what we need to be talking about, right? <laughs> but uh, last month, we were in the book of Proverbs, the whole month of children. And uh, but this month, the uh, first Sunday of July, we're going to start in the Gospels. So we have the first Gospel, the book of Matthew. For those who want to follow along, our scripture this morning is Matthew, the 11th chapter, and we'll be reading verse 7 through 19. Our title, Wisdom in the Gospels, is the name of our new unit, and our title is Wisdom in Action. Wisdom is action. You know, we have a lot to say. We have a lot to say about wisdom. But how to put it in action, Amen. man. Amen. That's always a challenge, right? It sure is. It sure is. Because <laughs> uh, sometimes we feel like we're wise beyond years. Yes. But how do you put it in action? Right. Okay, well, let's go ahead and pray. Okay. All right. Well, thank Lord, you. Father, we come right now before your throne, Lord God. We give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord God, thank for the things that you have done, Lord God, the things that you are doing, Lord God, and the things you will do. And we give you glory for that, Father God. Lord. And now, God, we come before you, Lord God, asking you that you give us wisdom. Help us, Lord. Lord. Help give us wisdom and to understand your word, Lord God. God, we thank you for what you're doing in this season, Lord God. God, you be glorified this day in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for that prayer. So uh, we're in the gospel this morning, Matthew, the seventh chapter. I'm sorry, the eleventh chapter. Eleven. Chapter 11, verses 7 through um, 19. Now, our discussion this morning is going to be about Jesus and John the Baptist. Amen. 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 What what tools do we got? I mean, if anything, you know, um, uh, some theologians say, and, and I believe, Jesus is wisdom. Amen. He is the ultimate, divine Amen. wisdom. Amen. So we see him this morning. Oh, He's in the beginning of his uh, ministry. And guess who his forerunner is? We call him forerunner John the Baptist. Uh, we've heard a lot about John the Baptist. Yeah. We know that on earth, John the Baptist and Jesus were first cousins. We know that on earth, John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus. We, we remember the, uh, the story, if you look at Matthew, the uh, first uh, and second chapter, we read about how, uh, uh, first chapter, we read about how uh, the mother of Jesus, Mary, visited Elizabeth, who was John's mother. And she was, Elizabeth was already pregnant with John. And when she heard Mary's voice, uh, John the Baptist leaped. The Holy Ghost caused the baby in the womb. So he was on fire, the Lord, in the womb. Amen. 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 So we, that's what our lesson is about. John the Baptist and Jesus. Their ministries, how they met and how they relate to each other. And that's what our lesson is here. Maybe you're on the 11th chapter. We saw the 7th verse, but it do us well to discuss a little bit verses 1 through 6. I'm not going to read them, Reverend Caper, but if we can have just a little discussion, uh, remind me a little bit. What were the first six verses was about? Well, what happened here, uh, John is in prison. Now, okay. And uh, John wanted to know whether Jesus was the Messiah or did we expect another? Mm -hmm. So he sent his disciples out to ask Jesus a question. Mm -hmm. And then we come into verse 7 okay. uh, uh, of what's going on. All right. So when John the Baptist asked that question, are you the Messiah or do we look for another? That might be surprising because we know that earlier, uh, according to the account of St. John, the first chapter, uh, John the Baptist announced, you know, Jesus came to him to be that right. right. And, you know, John said, you know, uh, you should be baptized of me. Right. And when John saw him walking, he said, behold, the Lamb of God Amen. who comes to take away the sin of the world. 
So John, he, John the Baptist, he announced Jesus as being the Messiah on more than one occasion. Amen. But I guess when you get in prison, you get in trouble, that'll make you anybody Amen. die, right? Amen. When you know you're on the uh, death row, Amen. you know, John's about to be executed. Amen. When I get here, you know, he just flies. Yeah, yeah, you know, but it's just a part that I, I did not include there. And uh, mm -hmm. Jesus answers to this to the disciples. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, tell them, mm -hmm. go back and tell them what you've seen. All right. Uh, the, 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 the blind now yes. see. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people who have, who have been delivered, yes. healed. Uh, people, the gospel has been preached and people mm -hmm. are slaves. Right. So he said, go back and tell him what you've seen. That's the title. The work, that I, the work that I've done, let it speak for me. Amen. <laughs> that, that, you know the gospel song. Like, I believe yeah. we got a gospel saying, the work I've done, speak to me. But look, so that was wisdom in action. Amen. Amen. Jesus is wisdom. Amen. And he already, after Jesus uh, was baptized, we know that according to Matthew, uh, Matthew 4, he went into the wilderness. But when he started his ministry, when he came out in Matthew 5, when he came out to serve him, Jesus, his first words were the words that John had been saying. Repent, repent. Behold, the kingdom of God yeah. is at hand. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. He was taken right up. Yeah. Okay, let's get into the scripture there. That gives us a little background. So we got the John the Baptist is what we're going to be talking about as relating to Jesus' ministry. And Jesus here has answered that question. You know, yeah, we look at the actions I've done. And let's see what else. Jesus has to say about John the Baptist. We're going to begin at verse 7. And Reverend Capus, you go ahead and read for us so that first group. What's that? 7 through? 7 through 10. All right. And it reads, um, And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John, mm -hmm. What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? Mm -hmm. But what went you out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft raiment clothing are in the king's house. Oh my God. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Amen. 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 Thank you for reading that for us this morning. So that's King James. So verse 7. And as they departed, now this is Jesus, he's, he's, he's continuing talking. He had been talking to his disciples in the multitude. Then he uh, ordained the disciples the uh, previous chapter and had commissioned them to go, go out. out. Yeah. Right. So these are the ones that departed. The end, uh, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John. So here he talks about John. What is it you come out to willing to see? A reed shaking? Was John the Baptist shaky? Was he shaky on his face? I mean, I mean, Jesus here is asking people, what y'all come out to see? Mm -hmm. And we know that John, John the Baptist was a preacher of all preachers. John the Baptist, believe it or not, uh, Reverend Kate said, doing a little study, John the Baptist was the last of the Old Testament prophets. Before John the Baptist, you know, we got our Old Testament. Come on, Bible class, come with me. And we have our New Testament, right? In the Old Testament, what's the last book of the Bible? Well, the last book of the Bible is Malachi. And guess what? There were 400 years of silence. All right. When you look at the Old Testament, all the prophecy, prophets, what were they prophesying? Prophesying, prophesying, prophesying. But after Malachi, there were 400 years of silence. So the people of Israel hadn't heard from God until John the Baptist come on the scene. And boy, did he, he didn't come in. He came here kicking his friend. Like I mentioned a while ago, as a baby in the womb, he was shouting. And once he came out uh, with his ministry, repent, repent. You can read about uh, his ministry in John, St. John, the first chapter. I'm a gospel talk about Amen. John the Baptist. Amen. So that's where Jesus said, now who do you think y'all are coming to see? Somebody who's shaky in the faith? Oh, no, no, no. Verse uh, 8. Jesus said, but now what, what, what is it now? Uh, you thought he'd be a man clothed in soft raiment? 
You know, that's indicating some kind of rich person. Yeah, yeah. You look at somebody who's dressed up. Dress up you yeah. know what? It sounds like Jesus is talking to us. Right. But yeah. when we go to church, what they're looking for? Yeah. yeah. You're looking for somebody shaking, somebody dressed up. What they're looking for? Jesus is saying, you know, they, they went out uh, looking for, at his appearance Thank more God. so than the word that he's speaking. Uh, you preach and, that, and that happens today. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we go to see what he's dressed up in or what she's dressed up in yes, yes, uh, and yes. uh, how they bring the word. Are they going to be shaky? Or yeah. Are they going to be strong? You know, are they going to hoop? Are they going to howl? You know, we, we look for uh, the outward appearance well, instead of hearing the word of God right. and what God has to say. He that has a, he, he, Jesus says it later in the scriptures, mm -hmm. he that has an ear, let him hear. Let him hear Come on, what God right. has to say. Because right, right, right. you know what God, what God was looking for a king. You know, uh, uh, talking about King David. Yeah. He said, y'all are looking on the outside, right. but I'm looking at the heart. Right. Come on, people. So what is that? All right, come on now. Preach it. Just keep on preaching. Verse 9. Jesus continued to ask these rhetorical questions. He, he, he was just, he, he was making a point. He, he knew what the answers were. But what you went out to see, a prophet, he said, oh, 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 he's more than a prophet. Yeah, yeah. John the Baptist was the prophet of all the prophets. Yeah. Uh, John the Baptist, and we're so blessed. Why he's so blessed? He's seen what all the prophets did prophesying yeah. for. Come on, man. When, when you read the Old Testament, now I, I didn't do my homework. I don't know how many prophets in the Old Testament. There's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of them are prophesying the thing that John the Baptist come here to see. Amen. John Amen. the Baptist being the forefront of Jesus. John the Baptist actually seeing. He is heralding, he's bringing in the Messiah that almost hundreds of years, 1,200 years of prophecy. Yeah, yeah. Going way back from Abraham and Genesis, about 13. Oh, all the way up to this present moment. Yeah, yeah. So he was, yes, Jesus is right. He's telling them, John the Baptist is a prophet of all prophets, if y'all didn't know. In verse 10, Jesus quotes what Malachi 3 and 1. For he said, My whole is written. I send my messenger. If you look up Malachi 3 1, Malachi being the last prophet of the Bible, uh, uh, of the Old Testament, Malachi being the last prophet heard for over 400 years, and that's what he had to say. I sent my messenger to fold that face. You even had Old Testament prophets that prophesied John the Baptist. Right. If we could look up Isaiah, I believe the 40th chapter, I'm a I, I got to learn, y'all can give me class and I bring in my Bible because uh, I think I got my Bible on the phone and I feel like I can find it real quickly. We're going to see because I don't want to take away uh, time from the lesson. But I just want to find a place here. I know Isaiah 40 is where Isaiah prophesied about John the Baptist, mm -hmm. what his role would be. And his role would be to do this. He said, uh, the voice of him that cried in the wilderness. Prepare ye. This is Isaiah 40, the third verse, and the fourth verse. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. One more verse. Every valley shall be what? Exalted. And every mountain shall be made what? Low. And every crooked shall be made what? Straight. Now this is the prophecy of John the Baptist. And what his role would be in the coming of the Messiah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, something I wrote down here also. Uh -huh. It says, greatness is not measured by one's appearance. All right. But uh, by the work he does. Yes, yes. And, and so even though John was not what we would call uh, holy. Yes. Standard look. Yeah, yeah. Tell him a little bit about Tell him how did John the Baptist. Make sure he wore those John, beautiful leggings no, 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 and purple no, robes no, and John, gold, no, didn't he? No, 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 what did he wear in the back? John only wore uh, 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 animal skin, the crown. Right. That's it. What? Yeah, he didn't wear, come in no, no nice robe or nothing. Yes. He didn't come in a fancy robe, a fancy okay. suit. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't look, now, uh -uh. you would, in all honesty, we today would not hear a word that John had to say because so. because of the fact that his appearance. Huh. And, and and so the man was preaching the word of God.
telling people to repent, but the kingdom of God is at hand. It's not as quite often we today, we feel like if you're not in the church building, we can't hear you. The man on the corner that's, that's with the bullhorn and on the street uh, corner uh, saying, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. How often do we pass that person up? Amen. And we don't want to hear him because he's not in the church. He's right. not looking holy. Right. He, he's not, you know, uh, all sanctimonious. Thank you. Yeah. So we don't want to hear him. Amen. And, but that's the same thing here. Um, John was coming preaching. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And I, I'm telling you, and, and like you say, he wasn't in the city of Jerusalem. He wasn't in the synagogue. He was out, the Bible said he was in the wilderness. And believe it or not, they said crowds of people come out to see John the Baptist. Yeah, right. And you can read about how he upbraided them, didn't he? Yeah. He told the Pharisees, you're snotting, you're back with your diapers. What you come out here for? Right, right. But he told them, repent, repent. And he was strange looking. Yeah. That little girl. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and eating locusts and wild honey. He just didn't fit the stereotypical. Yeah, no, no. And so be careful how he passed up folks that's heralding the word of God. Amen. 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 So we go on. And what else did Jesus have to say about this John the Baptist? And it's so important. I guess, I guess you want to know what does that have to do with me today? Amen. Well, we're going to line them up in just a moment. Amen. Let's go ahead and, and continue with verses, Reverend. Yeah. We can read verses 11 to 15 so I can read the time. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence take it by force. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, right. this is Elijah. Okay. This is Elijah. Which was for to come. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. All right. Okay. Thank you for reading that for us. So, so we're getting at verse 11. For I say unto you that all the men born of women, no greater, no greater than John the Baptist. So he was the last of the Old Testament prophets. Yeah. He represents the end of what some theologian call, I don't know this word, old dispensation, the Old Testament, and the beginning of the new. But here's the line, Reverend, that kind of threw us a little bit. So Jesus said, John the Baptist, uh, uh, there's no man among them a greater uh, than John the Baptist. Then he go on to say, but he that's the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So we see that uh, now uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven that's in heaven has now been brought to earth. In other words, we're entering into the age of grace. We're entering into uh, uh, Jesus has brought the kingdom of heaven down to earth. So we have an advantage than what John the Baptist, you know, really is yeah. on the on the cusp. Amen. And, and, and if you remember, Jesus said that John is greater than the prophets. Right. Why? Because John mm -hmm. has now seen what the prophets spoke about. Amen. Amen. But we who are in Christ, glory to God, Amen. greater than John. So that makes John less than us. Right. Why? Because we have seen Christ or read of Christ uh, shedding his blood right. on the cross. For our, uh, amen. Amen. So we are greater is what Christ is saying here. Right. Uh, so thank God for his blood. Glory to God. Thank God for his right. blood. But we see the wisdom in action. This amen. is Jesus speaking. Amen. Amen. Now here we go, verse 12. Now come on, Reverend. You got to help me deal with it. Now this is one that people tackle here. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violence take it by force. You mean heaven has violence? Well, what is it? What is it saying? Now, I've found so many different commentators what they had to say about it. But you know, I, I do know in this Christian life, even when we after we accept, and I'm talking to new Christian now, I don't mean to scare you away. But once you accept Jesus Christ in your life, the devil come forth. And it's a constant struggle, not yeah. all the time as you get older yeah. and mature. Supposedly, Reverend, it gets a little easier. You know, I was wrangling yesterday. Now, holy as I am, 
the devil come sitting right on my shoulder and telling me to do stuff I know I should Amen. not be doing. Amen? <laughs> but evil is present. What does it say that Romans said? Every time the things I would, would not do, that's the things I want to do. Amen. Amen. And the things I should be doing, oh, yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to pick up a Bible. Yeah. But yeah. the word of God yeah. is a weapon. Did you know that? And reading the book of Ephesians, talking about the whole armor of God, he gives you all those weapons. But guess what the offensive weapon is? The sword of the spirit. Amen. Now the sword, that's violent. Amen. That Amen. is violent. Amen. So Amen. since the days of John the Baptist until now, see, all of us who have the advantage of, of Jesus, of, of grace, saving grace, all of us, and uh, it, it's stormy. There are many people saved. Praise God. We've got a long way to go. Amen. But they take it by force. There's a constant struggle and a fight. But, but, but also, sister, on that, uh, it, it also shows the fervency uh, mm -hmm. of one who is trying to get into heaven. You've you got to take some things by force. You've yeah. got to force your way in. Listen, because yeah. you have oppositions coming your way. Glory right. to God. Right. Right. You, right. you got to put your way. Glory right. to God. Right.
Testament talk about John the Baptist being in the spirit of Elijah because he had that same type of spirit and that same type of ministry. Amen. Amen. So you got to hear, let him hear. Jesus saying, listen, what John, listen to what we're saying. Listen, all of this has come to pass. This is not some made up story, fairy tale. Now, this is the truth. And this is going to help you today. Let's finish up, Reverend, and then we're going to talk a little bit more. Before we finish up, I still want to help on that a little bit. Okay, all right, go ahead. I, I, I'm reading here in, this, uh, in, the, in the book here. It yes. says, uh, Jesus concluded the last paragraph. <laughs> Jesus concluded this part of this teaching in, in verse 14 to 15. It, it was simple choice. If those listeners were willing to believe in what Jesus had said and what they had witnessed John the Baptist doing, then John the Baptist was truly the promised forerunner, Amen. Elijah, uh, which was spoken in, in uh, Malachi 4, 5 through 6. And, and the Messiah, and Jesus was the Messiah, uh, the forerunner of the Messiah, I should say, and Jesus was the Messiah. Uh, Mal Malachi 4 5 indicates Elijah was to return to prepare Messiah's way. Right. Ironically, John the Baptist does not recognize himself in that role, wow. at least in John 1 19 through 21. Jesus describes it to be him. That's right. Yeah. Jesus, and that's why Jesus said, Man, if you believe what I'm saying, he that has an ear, let him hear. The word of God is, is, is real. Yeah. It's true. I mean, it's the word of God. So if we say Jesus is from Genesis to Revelation, right. we should believe the whole thing. Amen. You know, just don't take something and believe. Right. You know, I'm throwing that out because that's what the... Right. That's Old Testament. Come on. Gotta do it later. Yeah. It's yeah. not everything to do with it. Amen. 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 It's not, it's not just one example. Amen. Amen. Verses 16 through 19. Verse 16 says, But whereunto shall I liken this generation? Mm -hmm. It is like unto children sitting in the market and calling unto their fellow and saying, We have piped unto you, and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and you have not lamented. But John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He is the devil. Uh, the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Behold, a man of gluttony and a wine giver, a friend of the publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Amen. 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 So Jesus is making a, a talk about, you know, how, how, you know, this generation, you know, uh, the church leaders, the Pharisees of the day, you know, to try to, you know, make the folk, you know, uh, respond. You know, uh, they're like little children playing instruments. Right. You know, we, we play a little. Had the song, you know, you won't dance. Therefore, we try the sad song, you won't mourn. Right. You know, folks is fed up with false religion, in other words. Well, yeah, yeah. People is yeah. fed up. Yeah. You know, they tired of playing games. Yeah. You know, right. we got all the churches, we can say the right things, do the right things, but are we right? Are we real? Right. Is your worship for real? Okay. Is it for real? But yet these Pharisees want to come here. And want to criticize John in verse 18. Uh, uh, well, uh, John, because he don't drink. Well, he don't drink and he, he don't drink and he don't eat. They say he got them. Right. Then they criticize the Son of Man. That's Jesus Christ. They criticize, talking about the Pharisee, the religious authority of the day. Rejected both John the Baptist and Jesus. Because here they said Jesus, they say he was a wine giver. Uh, uh, He's a friend of publicans and sinners. Yeah, yeah. He's a button because Jesus, you know, he hung out with the publicans and sinners. Yeah. You know, that's who Jesus said he got to seek and save the lost. Amen. And they could have him for that. Amen. 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 But the final word Jesus had to say, but wisdom is proved right by her deeds in the NIV. Wisdom is justified for children. Right. Wisdom is Jesus, is justified by his children. Children, the works he's been doing. He healed the sick, he raised the dead, he, he, he died and gave us salvation, he rose from the dead, he, he uh, you know, he, he uh, defeated death, he gave us the victory. Wisdom. Amen. Amen. Wisdom yeah, yeah, yeah. is justified. 
You said something yeah. earlier yeah. That, that, that I want to come back to. You. All right. You said Christ is wisdom. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah, he is wisdom. Glory to God. The Word of God is wisdom. Amen. And uh, when you really search the scriptures and you get into the scriptures, yeah. uh, then you, in the scriptures, you find treasures of wisdom. Oh, I talk about it. Unsearchable. Come on. Riches is what Paul called it. Us. And why is it treasures and why is it riches? I can't. People are lost. They search oh. for something. Come on. Come on, mature Christian. Type in comment. Let me know how precious is the love of God to you. Oh, what God. has he done for you? He is so good. And get to know him. I'm telling you right now, if you don't go deep into the uh, free part of your sins, right, and I'm inviting you to come to Christ. Yeah. We got yeah. our pastor here at White Oak, our phone number, our Facebook page is right there. Just call the church. Amen. 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 Invite you to come to college. Getting to know him, it is sweeter. Oh. And every day go by, no, 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 no. and it is like, no, no, no. it's better than silver and gold. Amen. You know, we talk about wisdom being, I'm sorry, it's worth that. Better than rubies. Better than silver and gold. We talk about wisdom being sweeter than a honeycomb. Amen. Wisdom is oh. cheap. That's Jesus. Amen. Let, 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 me, let me tell you, we're going to break this thing down. All right. Because Jesus is saying that, uh, again, uh, we, we played uh, uh, wedding songs for you and you didn't dance. Right. Then we decided to play morning songs for you because we thought you were in morning, so yeah. but you didn't you did mourn. So, and, and, and it's hard to please people. Yeah, you do. It is. Let me let me let me say this. Yeah. What bothers me mm -hmm. uh, with, with the church today mm -hmm. is we feel like if you don't do church this way, it's the wrong way. So look at you. You're doing it the wrong way, Sister Sims. You know, but come on, because uh, we should be doing it the way the church over there does it. Mm -hmm. But understand, God is using each church Amen. to do what He's calling them to do. God has anointed each church for a purpose. Amen. Not so man can be glorified, uh, but that he may be glorified. Amen. So of course he 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 uses you to do how what you do the best you do. Amen. So he used John mm -hmm. to do what he was doing. Right. And John didn't fellowship with the with the saints. Right. Or he didn't fellowship with the people. He didn't go out to eat uh dinner and drink wine with right. them. So he ate uh, locusts and wild honey. Right. That's all he, that was his diet. So they criticized him because he wouldn't hang out with the people. Right. Come on. But then Jesus came along and started hanging out with the people and you criticized him for hanging out with the people. Right. So you can't please people. Amen. You've got to hear what God has to say for your life. Amen. And God will tell you what he wants you to do. Yes. Don't em try to emulate the next person's way of doing things. Because mm -hmm. that may not be what God wants you to do. Amen. Um, I, I wrote this, and I, I want to just say this, and I'm going to listen. <laughs> First of all, Proverbs 1, 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, wow. So if you want wisdom, you have to get into God's word. You have to fear God and fear his word. Mm -hmm. Not You have to reverence God, I should say. Amen. Amen. Not, not fear God, but reverence God. And, and, and get into his word. For those not willing to hear his God, God's wisdom, uh, no messenger nor no message is good enough. So no matter who comes before you, no matter what's the message they bring to you, it's not good enough. Now John was too strict, then they said Jesus was too loose. <laughs> All right. But God is still at work Amen. in both of them.
Second chapter, 39 through 52. So in everything there's a, the time and season. I believe that's what that's uh -huh. about, right? Uh -huh. Everything. Uh -huh. Wisdom that amazing. Isn't it Glory amazing? Oh, I can hardly wait. My God, my God, God, my God, my God, my God. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Well, thank you, Pastor, for being here with us God this bless morning. It's certainly added five Amen. to our blessing. And if you will pray us out, then maybe our executive uh, producer will be back in the tune of that. Oh, amen, amen, amen. Um, you know, one of the things I want to say on closing, yes. but wisdom is proved right by her deeds. I think what the New Testament says, as the NIV says, but the uh, King James Version says, but wisdom is justified by her yes. children. Yes. Wisdom, the word of God, is justified by the saints today. It's justified by you and how you carry yourself. It's justified by you and how you witness to the, to the world. We pass to you God's wisdom of what he wants us to do. And don't try to appease man. Please don't. But appease God. God is who we try to please. And I guarantee you, your rewards will be great. Your rewards will be great. Amen? Amen. Don't try to please man. In the name of Jesus. So that's right. Glory to God. Father, we come right now again before you're going to break, God. God, give you glory for your word, Lord God. God, give you glory for the wisdom that we're receiving out of your word, Lord God. God, we ask that you would just move by your spirit, Lord God. Give us understanding of your word. Give us the wisdom to move in action, Lord God. Glory to God. God, use us that you may be glorified in our lives, Lord God. God, we thank you, Lord God. God, we thank you that you're going to use us and allow us to use wisdom. Because you, the wisdom comes from you, Lord. Yes. And we thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. And now, God, we just ask that you bless each and every one that's out there listening to us today, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that you give them the wisdom of how to, what, what you want them to do, Lord God. God, what you may want them to do may not be like the traditional person who would do it, Lord God. But God, use them and you be glorified. God, we give you glory for the things that you're doing in this season. Hallelujah. God, we give you honor. Hallelujah. And God, we give you all the praise. Oh, and God, we love you today. Love we you. honor you and we respect you. And, and, and we can't say enough about you, Lord God. And God, we just ask that you use us this day. In Jesus' name, we ask this prayer. Amen. 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 Amen.